As we know, in 2015, world the countries in the world adopted these 17 goals, and in them, it is a sustainable uh, CDG4 in order to achieve a sustainable and inclusive education for a long term. So the goals are for two axes, in order to include everyone, that is to guarantee learning opportunities, but also not leaving anyone behind, that is uh, to have equality in learning. In terms of access, the uh, goals of the CDG4 are focused on the goals 4.1 or 4.3. But I would like to emphasize on 4.4, 4.6, and 4.7 of CDG4 that refer to alphabetization. That is for a certain um, goals such as arithmetic and writing. And it also embraces competencies and necessary for work and incorporation of technologies of information and theoretical and practical knowledge to live today, such as a sustainable growth um, and human rights. And I would like to emphasize in education for citizenship, global citizenship that has been mentioned many times during this forum. And it's co it is correlated with the proposal that proposes uh, the, uh, that is proposed in the global guide. So global citizenship means that uh, this has to be uh, and uh, owning a sense between the global and international agencies and inclusion, uh, such as uh, what UNESCO uh, has mentioned, as for a transform is has to be used for transformation using uh, skills and uh, and attitudes that, that the students need in order to have a more inclusive, uh, just, and uh, fair and pacific uh, world. So UNESCO understands inclusive education, that one that provides uh, opportunities without the, the discriminating people due to their religion, language, economical position, and, pos and aptitude. It is the one that complies with the, the guidelines of uh, the uh, standards to fight against discrimination, and the one that guarantees uh, for uh, education for vulnerable people, such as people that has to move from one place to another, male, female, poor people, and people living in and marginal in rural areas. This is more uh, beyond uh, people with disabilities. So what are the challenges for inclusive education? Audrey Soleil highlights three challenges, which is first one, that there is no equal access for education, quality education. In this world, 63 million ha do not go to school, and 670 million people do not have a basic knowledge of mathematics and uh, lecture or reading. And the work environment is paying attention also to um, gender equity. And Vivian mentioned it. We have to invest $39 million at a global level from here to 2030 in order to guarantee basic education at a global uh, scale. And this is a policy, a long-term policy that we should establish and to follow up with perseverance with tools and measurements. I will not speak, I will not go into more details, but the situation in Latin America, we have information such as uh, that in Latin America and in the Caribbean, one out of two people were left behind or assigned at the basic uh, level of uh, education. And regarding uh, the Latin American and Caribbean education, one out of three uh, curricula do not deal with peace or do not include peace and nonviolence. Seven of out of ten countries in Latin America and Caribbean does not include uh, gender equity in their curricula. So in order to face the challenges for these regions, regions we need to speed up uh, the um, initiatives 
in order to achieve this CDG4. So as the president of Education Relief Foundation mentioned, there is nothing, uh, we need a collective uh, effort and a sustainable effort in order to achieve this CDG4. So uh, we have strategies and UNESCO promotes uh, promotions outside, north, south, and triangular. South, south as a as coordination between different organizations, individuals, and developed countries, and uh, those that are known as Global South. This cooperation could be based on mutual development or a common development. The cooperation South South or the triangular cooperation comparison describes the situation of countries that collaborate with another country that provides technology, resources, and knowledge. So UNESCO enrolls to cooperation north-south to the collaborat collaborative sector. And this is complemented with differences and uh, challenges. Uh, global solidarity is a key in order to achieve the goal for uh, the global the uh, goal 17. So solidarity will make possible to achieve our goals. So since the beginning, UNESCO has collaborated in order to generate collaboration spaces and promote best practices with some global initi initiatives such as international programs for training, Malala's fund from UNESCO in order to have a uh, NAILS uh, study and revoke the uh, network of uh, schools really, uh, associated to, to UNESCO or uh, lectures from UNESCO, some other awards, international awards and other initiatives. So to wrap up, I would like to quote some words from our general director that illustrate the objective of this forum and of this uh, specific panel. She says, the agenda 2030 for sustainable development is to promise that no one will leave, would be left behind because there is no sustainable development worth if we don't have, if we don't share it. Uh, education is the challenge of this century. There is no freedom without sustainable growth and without education. Thanks to education, each of us can try to be uh, to own their destination and will um, could collectively um, prepare for the future. And this is thanks to uh, the agenda, Global Agenda 2030. That's why promoting education and learning through all life for everyone is a priority for UNESCO. And we are uh, willing to help and support each country, civil associations, and academic organizations in this collaborative task for cooperation and global solidarity. Thank you very much.